Now on to Act 2. Act 2 starts with Lula Chamberlain, a worker for the Bureau of Reclaimed Spaces, reading a letter. After trying to navigate in the Zero, we pop out at this bureau and ask for help. Lula tells us to check St. Thomas's Church for old records of where 5 Dogwood Drive could be, and to go to Dr. Truman for help with Conway's hurt leg. They leave the Zero to visit the doctor, who gives Conway a strange medicine for their leg, which turns it into a weird glowing skeleton leg thing. End of Act 2. I skipped over a lot there, of course, but that's basically what happened. So, the entertainment. Oh, whoa. I can move the view. We're at a bar. Barfly sits alone. Oh, everything's kind of getting brighter. Too goddamn hot, Harry says. Is that a brick sandwich? It literally looks like a cinder block in between two slices of bread. Whoa. Look at how the lighting's changed. Does it change depending on what I look at? I think so. It like slowly morphs. Barfly sits alone at a table with two glasses, one empty. Examine empty glass. Examines full glass? Looks at ashtray. Blows gently with pursed lips. Observes ash configuration. Coughs. Wipes nose. With sleeve. <laughs> Ooh. At length, inspects sleeve. Remembers something trivial about the prior evening. Looks up suddenly. Evelyn, it's cool in here. Yep. Like Babylon outside. God damn, you're right. Well, cool in here. It's an oasis. I wonder how Ted's holding up. AC. Down there, they all have it. Ah, sure, you're right. I've never been to Texas. Oh, sure. They all have AC. Too cold, almost. In July, even. He's got a hotel. Yeah, hotel life. That's living. Maybe too much. I mean, what's to stop him, really? Meet some tall thing at the hotel bar? Nah. Ted's a good man. Nah, I know. He wouldn't. He wouldn't run around. You're right. How about a beer? Eh, no beer today. Hard times whiskey. <laughs> Remember the hard times whiskey distillery that Conway was taken to near the end of Act 4 to work off their debt? That's all you got? It's a good whiskey. Local. Yeah. You take deliveries from them? Sure. You ever see one of them? The boys from Hard Times? What? I heard they're strange. They work hard. 
They make a good whiskey. Who are we to judge? Sure. Who are we? No one of consequence. What's all this bread for? Sandwiches. Rain's law. <laughs> the old ones went bad while you were on vacation. You have a good time while the sandwiches rotted. Oh, you know me. Couldn't shut it off. Seven days on a beach and all I could think about was work. You know, the new kitchen. Maybe hire a hostess, you know? A hostess? At the lower depths? <laughs> crazy. Nah, it's not so crazy. I was in a bar down there in uh, New Orleans. They had a hostess. Some dive. She seats you and, uh, I don't know, points out the specials. We could have specials every night in here. Drink specials. You make cocktails? Nah. Food specials. Monday night. Chicken. Uh, I don't know. Grilled chicken? Caesar salad? Class it up, you know? Bess would have liked it. Here's to Bess. Yeah. Yeah. Let me grab a... Eh, here's to Bess. Good Christian woman. Good Christian woman. How about that sod in the corner? I'm not bothering nobody. They're talking about me. Been here long? As soon as I opened. Got started a bit earlier, I suspect. On a bender, huh? Sleeping in a ditch or something. You don't think... Maybe Ted? No. Ted's a good man. Honest. Well-liked. He's liked, but... He's well-liked. Sales is a good fit. Selling hammers. Can you believe it? Somebody has to. <laughs> the hammers, they don't sell themselves. You're here. It's just hard. Ted on the road. It's tough all over. What to do all day? Come here, I guess. Sure. That's what I do. Cheap drinks, conversation, and the entertainment. Sure. What's tonight? Oh, tonight it's... Oh, uh, Junebug. I'll stay for that. I need some music. Get my mind off Ted. Something romantic, you know? A love song from when the world was young. What time? Around eight, maybe? Well, set them up slow. Or I'll sleep right through it. Oh. Wow. It's a creepy place to just hang out in, in the dark. Wakefield stuns in entertainment. The premiere at Buffalo Street Student Theater was a curiosity. Two obscure plays by a local author were simultaneously presented for the pleasure of a handful of baffled patrons. The result? An absorbing, if unfocused, drama about the ills of debt and dishonesty. Certainly the highlight is Sarah Wakefield's performance. As Pearl Slade, the young woman who tries to rid herself of her parents' debts. She is a revelation. Sadly, her verve and imagination do little to salvage the tepid pantomime of the barfly. A character who, perhaps could have done with a few lines after all. Levi Tolbert, Kentucky Post.
Set designer notes. Doolittle must have been an odd bird. Many playwrights, um, a Tennessee Williams or a Eugene O'Neill, spend as much energy on precise descriptions of the play's set as they do on any of the dialogue. So my job is finding ways to be creative within constraint. But Doolittle only describes settings poetically. To be honest, I think he'd have preferred that there wasn't a set at all. Well, here I am, building one anyway. Serves him right for disappearing all those years ago, the enigmatic wino. I don't mind a drunk, but I hate riddles. Lula Chamberlain. Yeah, that's Lula there on the top right, and I think that's... That's somebody who was on the uh, Mucky Mammoth boat. I think their name might have been Will or something like that. And I'm not sure about the other person back there. Act 2 Sound Cues Sound 5, Distant Highway Sound 6, Nature Program Sound 7, Drone Number 2 Sound 8, Door Opening Sound 9, Door Closing Sound 10, Car Passing By Put it back on that weird dinosaur show, will you? Nah, those history programs don't make any sense. I prefer the nature programs. They think they can just say anything on TV. I don't believe there to be a damn word in the Bible about dinosaurs on the ark. Been a long time since Sunday school for me. Do you go to church, though? Nah, not since Bess. It was her church, really. Good Christian woman. Good Christian woman. Well, I'm curious to see where they're going with it. They've got you now. I just think they're going to run out of rope before too long. Dinosaurs on the Ark. I prefer the nature programs. Yeah. So your vacation was good? Seven days poolside. I thought you said it was a beach. Oh, uh, sure. Uh, no, it was a pool. Was it a pool? Or a beach? Uh, maybe. I don't remember. Weird. You think I'm making this up? Oh, no, I... Hi, Harry. Are the old folks here? Just me and Evelyn. All morning. Hi, Evelyn. And that sot in the corner. You're early, Pearl. Your parents usually don't roll in until the evening, five or six. Everything all right? Oh, sure. Thanks. We just have some stuff to talk about. Well, post up here and let's watch this weird dinosaur show. I'll stand you a drink. All Harry's pouring today is hard times whiskey. That's all you got? They make a good whiskey. Sure, but, you know, the rumors. Rumors are rumors. Put it on my tab, Harry. You driving, Pearl? Oh, God, no. You know they want almost 40 cents a gallon? Whew. I had the early shift, so I just walked over. In this heat? You still working over there at, uh... Ace Jewelry and Loan. Joe Harden, proudly trading shortcuts for dignity six days a week since 1962. At least they have the piety to shut down on Sunday. With Joe, it's more likely a hangover. <laughs> Can it be both? Well, I know you see more trade than I do. Must be slow over at the hardware store. Slow isn't the word. And now Ted is out shilling for quality hammers to make up income. Have you considered quality hammers on your shelf? 
We made the switch recently and business has tripled. Well, of course, I'd love to have dinner with your lovely daughters. Evelyn. Hey, a man gets lonely out on the road. I know how it is. Nah. Harry, you've been traveling, right? Sure, yeah. Down in New Orleans. Just taking a break. A vacation. Looking around for... Ideas. Tell her about the pool. Or the beach. Evelyn. Sounds nice. And the hostess. I may just cut you off. <laughs> Evelyn looks dejected. Harry clears his throat. Uh, so, the pool? Or the beach? Yeah, Harry. Which was it? Well, it was a week of relaxation and now I'm back. You still look stressed. If you don't mind me saying. <laughs> he just looks like that. Sure, that's just how I look. I've never known you to leave town, Harry. I've never known you to leave this bar. Oh, no, I, I get out. You still drive that old truck? I don't know. I think they towed it eventually. The hell you say? That must have been years ago, Harry. How do you get around now? I, uh, I take the bus. Or I walk. You walk to New Orleans? Watch it, Evelyn. I didn't mean nothing by it, Harry. Harry, did you really go to New Orleans? Now, just where do you two get off? Sorry, forget it. Sure, she didn't mean nothing by it. We'll lay off you and get back to drinking. Gotta be ready for the entertainment. Oh, who's on tonight? Tonight it's a June bug. Works for me. Uh, around eight, I think. I'll stick around. I could use some sad music. I came here to break some hearts. What's that? To dash dreams. What are you talking about? Got to talk to my parents about their bar tab. I won't be paying for them anymore. Hang on now. No. It's time to cut the old folks loose and head west. I can't keep enabling them. You know? A debt's a debt now. Harry, I'm sorry. I know you've got a vested interest, and I don't want to make a victim of you. They'll come up with it somehow. I'm sure. No, it's not that. The thing about debts is... You never know when they'll... Be reckoned and called in. What's that mean? Uh, I'm not saying anything, but... I know debt, Harry. I see it all day. It's all around me. Like a thick gray fog. It's in the air I breathe. At the pawn shop. They have a new financial technology. I'm the ambassador. Did you know that? A new technology? It's a new kind of debt, Evelyn. And it's a mess. What do you mean, a new kind of debt? You know what we do at the pawn shop? Secured loans. We don't buy used goods. We take personal property as collateral on a loan. Then if you don't pay your loan, we sell your stuff. Sure, I get that. It works for people who couldn't get loans otherwise, I guess. Now Harden has this new idea. He calls it a payday advance. But it's just a short-term unsecured loan with a wicked interest rate. There's no filtering. Most who borrow can't keep up. Then he has this big pile of debts with big returns on paper, and he can sell those debts to a bank. Huh. Who's borrowing like that? Who do you think? When Joe put me in charge of it? 
The only dark-skinned clerk in this whole shop? You think so? I know it. Don't you see? I look just like you. You can trust me. But Joe knows they won't pay on time. There's no money in lending, but there's money in usury. That's in the Bible. I won't be a shill. Just have to save a bit more, and then I go to California. I'll be a real clerk. At a credit union or something. Something ethical. Just have to get rid of these old parasites first. Neither a borrower nor a lender be. Well, my tab is in good shape, I think. You're behind, too. Not as bad as the Slades, but... Well, Harry, the only thing I owe you is a handshake and this whiskey you're about to pour me. Uh, let's say this one's on me, Pearl. Nah, I'm good for it. For today, let's just say it's on me. You're awfully strict about cash for a guy who just got back from a vacation. Drink up, Evelyn. Maybe you'd better find some other chair to sink into so your debts don't get reckoned out from under you. I'm out for a bit. I'll be back later to disappoint a couple of old deadbeats. I'll stay for the entertainment. I won't throw you out. But just remember what I said. Stiffly written, but well acted. There aren't many characters in the entertainment. Now playing at Buffalo Street Student Theater. But director James B. Carrington has been able to give them all enough dimension to make them interesting. Edgar Foy's performance as dejected bartender Harry is convincing, but this is not a role into which an actor can project much power. The audience pities him without ever really knowing why. Indeed, despite the cast's well-rounded portrayals, sparks only fly once or twice. Zoe Hook, Louisville Times. Dramaturge's Notes To set the play in present day 1973, we needed to adjust the price of gas as discussed by Pearl, Evelyn, and Harry. We also made some adjustments to the description of Pearl's work. We left in a line about Rain's Law, which would have been archaic in Doolittle's time anyway. I guess the biggest change we made, besides mashing the two Doolittle plays into one, was to the title. I thought we should rename it A Reckoning and a Barfly. To mix the two titles and really be clear about where it came from. But Carrington liked the bleak irony of the entertainment. Joseph Wheatry. I feel like the irony of the entertainment is that there's no entertainment. I don't think we're going to hear any entertainment. <laughs> Act 3 sound cues. Sound 11, distant highway. 12, drone number 3. Rosa. Management material. That's what he said. Lawrence. Is that so? Eleven years behind a supermarket till? You're damn right. Damn right. I have commitment and reliability. That's what he said. Management material. I bet they raise you to three dollars. I bet four. The responsibility. Whew. You see Pearl today? Uh, she was working all day, I think. Usually doesn't work mornings. The Slade women are all getting promoted. 
I think they just put her on another shift. What's the morning shift like at a pawn shop, do you think? <laughs> Black coffee and desperation. Let's celebrate. Harry, another round. We're celebrating two promotions in the family. Talk to Pearl today. Eh, she worked all day. She was here earlier. Looking for you two. She'll be back. Why don't you just pace yourselves till you talk to her? We're celebrating. Pace yourselves. Or pay your bill. Why are you so stuck on a bill all of a sudden? Are you sunstruck? Sure. You know, it's twice as bright when you got the ocean and the pool both reflecting at you. Evelyn. You catch sight of any alligators? Sure. Those gators everywhere. A swamp. Big sandy swamp with a pool and a hostess. What's that? Set him up, Harry. Junebug will be here any minute. And we want to be receptive. Alright. But I keep track. There'll be a reckoning. The folks here? About the reckoning? First I've heard. What's up, Harry? Short on your bills? Let the books get away from you? That's an ignorant thing to say. Been doing my books for ten years, keeping this place alive all on my own ever since Bess. I'd just let you run that tab up until you drink yourselves underground. I just, I just want to stop for a second and say I like that they said drink yourselves underground. Not drink yourselves like into the ground like dead, but drink yourselves underground where you have to work to pay off your debt. At the Hard Times Whiskey Distillery. No, he didn't mean nothing by it, Harry. Yeah, Harry. You know I'm only joking. Sure, I know. I know you're joking. Alright, let's drink. I better slow down. Hard Times Whiskey comes on strong. Don't want to end up like that boiled owl in the corner. Me? I can't tell anymore. I hear they have some secret ingredients. Or a secret process or something. Something in the wood they age it in. Yeah, something strange in that wood. Drink up, Larry. Don't call me Larry. It sounds like an old man. All right, Silver Fox. Now you... I'll let it slide. Another? Well, I don't get paid until Friday. And I haven't seen Pearl all day. She can pick it up when she comes back. Don't count on it. What the hell kind of thing to say is that? Our own daughter. Generosities of limits. I don't know what she said, but the Slades are good for it. This family takes care of our own. Sure, we'll get it straightened out when she comes back. Better get here soon, or she'll miss the entertainment. Shouldn't Junebug be here now, Harry? Yep. That's what you get working with artists. Good entertainment, but it's always late. This is pretty late, though. We'll stick around. We're celebrating. Sure. Yeah, not expecting a late-night sentimental call. And if he does, let it ring. The philanderer. Last drink, Evelyn? One more, Harry. 
I just want to hear some music. Well, she'd better show up soon. Writer's Notes Many in the audience consider leaving. If anyone leaves, let them leave. The theater is not a prison. If anyone coughs, cough also. The theater is not a sickbed. We minister to the audience. We revere the pains of the audience. Lem Doolittle Entertainment bores at times. The conclusion of the entertainment is obscure modernism posing as tragedy. We can only presume that this is another of this company's experimental interventions into the original script, as it portrays the human drama so carefully erected over the prior three scenes. Lula Chamberlain's set is unpretentious and realistic, with a handful of confident lighting cues. The dialogue has an easy facility for barroom banter, but a disconcerting habit of settling into familiar grooves. An uneven but decent production. Nathan Masters, Lexington Herald. Act 3 sound cues. Sound 13, Distant Highway. 14, Jukebox Love Song. 15, Disconcerting Hum. I love this song. Oh, I missed whatever they said. Oh, I've never heard it. It's a love song. It's a valentine. Sure. Ever been in love? Nope. Me neither. Well, there's Ted. Son of a bitch. Evelyn. You love Ted, right? He's a son of a bitch. Out on the road, selling hammers and hammering shop girls. You know he isn't. Well, I wish he would. You don't mean that. Sure. I don't mean that. He's a son of a bitch. But you have to stick by your family. Sometimes. If it kills you. Do you? Why? You just have to. Why? I love this song. What if they're better off without us? My folks could get better with money. Ted could, I don't know, meet someone new? He wouldn't. He's a good man. Would you? Ugh. <sighs> All I want is to be free of parasites. Keep my own money, pay my own debts. Don't be a fool. Buy me a drink. What do you want? I want to run a hardware store with my dear husband. Evelyn, I want a whiskey. That's all you want? And a love song. She could have said. Sure. Pearl, you could have said something. I shouldn't have to. Shouldn't have to say anything, Dad. Letting us just sit and soak up a debt. We're celebrating. Pearl, it's supposed to be a celebration. Don't you know the news? Larry, drop it. So celebrate. I'm not stopping you. But I'm not paying for it. Your mother is going to be a manager. So put a manager's salary on that tab. It's not... Sure, they said she's management material. What kind of material are you, Pearl? Maybe. He said he... He said maybe. I'm made of sweat and blood and beer. Just like you raised me. 
That's a damn strange thing to say. Sure, my hands are cut up, but you're a loan clerk and your mother is a manager at a supermarket. Damn it, Lawrence. It's not settled. Not settled? O'Neill just handed you a promotion. Why can't you celebrate? Rosa, what did he say to you? Remember what he said to you? He said... Didn't he? He said... Maybe eventually. Maybe eventually. Maybe eventually management material. Keep your chin up. Maybe eventually. Sooner or later. Keep your chin up. How's that, Dad? Enough. You can still settle. It'll just take longer. I should look again. Just sit with me, Larry. Let's just wait for the music. Get away from the awfulness. Sure. We can celebrate. Sure. Slade women are moving up. Eventually. If she's this late, she's not coming. Where's Junebug? Where's the entertainment? I said, if she's this late, she always shows up. I've got nothing better to do. You gonna settle up first? Don't be a fool. Watch it. I'll buy you a drink. How about a water, Evelyn? And maybe call it a night? What time is it? I love this song. It's relaxing. Like the sun, by the pool, on a beach full of gators. God damn it, Evelyn. Harry, your language. What would Bess think? Good Christian woman. God damn it, who cares if I did or didn't go to New Orleans? She didn't mean anything by it. Maybe I just sat here alone in the dark. Would you like that, Evelyn? Is that what you want to hear? Watching nature programs in the dark. Just me and the deer and the gators and the goddamn dinosaurs. It was Harry's Ark, Evelyn. Two by two out of the flood and into the poorhouse. She's just drunk. All on my dime. Well, there's going to be a reckoning. All of you. Just stick around and you'll see. What are you talking about, Harry? What reckoning? I want to hear another love song. Where's Junebug? Well, I hope she never shows up. I can't pay her. The money's run out. What's that? It's gone. The money's all gone. I let you sponges soak up so many free drinks now I can't even stock the whiskey without striking a deal. No more whiskey? Harry. What kind of deal? Doesn't matter. You can't blame us. Harry, we're just a little short from time to time. Sure. Just leave, Pearl. Just trust me. Oh, okay. I'm leaving. Are you sure? I'm sure. You don't deserve this. All I want is a love song. And a whiskey. You'll have plenty of time for whiskey. I just want to be left alone... That man is like a straitjacket. I know, Evelyn. If only you'd meet some tall young thing on the road. I know.
11 years behind a supermarket till. Keep your chin up, Rosa. Eventually. Maybe. Maybe eventually. Now, I... You all should clear out. Where would we go? Just let us wait. Let us wait for Junebug. We're good for it. We just want to have a few drinks, see the entertainment, and we'll go home. You don't understand. Sure. We know you're struggling. We're all struggling. Harry, you said you have a deal, right? God damn it. You don't understand me. Harry, your language. What's to understand? We'll settle our debt soon. Rose is in line for this promotion. All they want is debt. They feed on it. They put it in the whiskey. What? What the hell are you saying? He'll be here soon. The boy from hard times. There'll be a reckoning. Harry, our, our debt's not to the distillery. It is now. I traded it. I sold it. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Holy shit, this game is so good. I did not expect these interludes to be so large. I was thinking they'd be really tiny things, maybe a few minutes at most, but that was huge. So far, it seems like each interlude informs what happens in the next act. Because I'm pretty sure it's the next act where we see Junebug and, uh, I forgot the name of the other person, Junebug and the person they're writing with, they both sing and do music together. Um... Yeah, I'm pretty sure the next act is where we meet them. I think our car breaks down or something like that, and they're on their motorcycle. They stop for us. And then we go to the to Harry's bar. I remember... I have a vague memory of Harry telling us about the distillery. And I think warning us. So I think what we just saw there was... a little bit before... what happened when we went to Harry's place. It's so poignantly and disturbingly represents stuff that I saw in America growing up in a small town. It also makes me deeply grateful that I don't live in the United States anymore since I moved to Finland about a year ago to be with my wife. The feeling that I got just walking around my small town in California was just depression. Everything felt depressed. Everything looked depressed. Things were just falling apart. People in general were not happy because life wasn't very good. And here in Finland, it just feels so much better. It's such a massive relief to not feel that horrible, sick feeling anytime you're outside looking at the world and looking at other people. <sighs> well, I'm going to end this episode here. So I hope you've enjoyed so far, and when I return, we're going to read the summary for Act 3, and then play the next interlude. <laughs>